Hey friends, let's talk about web development from the beginning. This time we'll talk about Git and GitHub. Okay, so we're standing at our working directory. What we want to do to create a Git repo is to run Git init. Now this will initialize a empty Git repository and you can see that it's done just that. So how do I learn more? Seems to be nothing here. But if you actually list all the files, you see that you have a .git directory and this is what tells you that here's a repo if you want to disconnect uh, your git repo uh, uh, from your files you can just delete this uh, directory here now we don't have much at this point we have an empty repo so what we can do is to add a file for example it's very common to work on a web development project as part of this repo so here we can type a little great so now we have a very, very basic web page. So what's next? A good command to know when it comes to git is git status. Git status will show you what is going on with your code. Currently, it's saying that we have untracked file, which means that git has no idea about these files. It's not tracking them. To make this part of git and, and it tracking the file, we can do git add, and then we can type index.html. Now, at this point, point it has come to a staging area so the file is staged and it's ready to be committed committed is if you think about it is the same thing as saying that something is saved this is a point in time that you can return to so we are ready to commit a file we're ready to do that save let's do that next git commit minus m that's a flag we use for message so at this point we're saying first commit now we have a file committed uh, and we check git status again and it tells us nothing com to commit the working tree that we're working with is clean meaning that we don't have any kind of pending changes. We can also see this uh, commit if we do a git log it will tell us all about different kinds of history. Now something you want to do sometimes is to reset a change. So let's say that I go in here I do this change I do git status and it's telling me it's modified now git is telling me what i can be doing next uh, what i've done is to add the file you saw that i did a git add uh, i don't need to specify a specific file name git add with a dot simply means i take all the files uh, the dot simply matches everything now this is one is telling me to run a git restore on the stage file to unstage so let's try that git restore staged index html and see what happens now at this point you see that it went from being red or, or it went from being green to being red which means we have taken it back from a stage where it was ready to be committed to one stage back so that's git restore that's a command that you can use to just remove it a level now, because we like this change, we will need to re-add it. As I said, you can either do git add dot to get all the files if you're not interested in adding all the files, but you have a few files like so, you can do git add. Now, quick check with git status. We see that it's ready to be committed. It's true that second update. Now, at this point, let's do a git log. And we see that we have suddenly, if we expand this a little bit, we see that we have two different commits. So Git is keeping track of things. Now, if you have a GitHub account, you could be creating a repository. You can go into here and click Add. You could give it a name, say sample repo, and something. And if you make it public, you can start it with a template, a readme, and so on. Who am I as an owner? So I'm selecting uh, myself, and I am ready to create a repo. Now once I tell a re uh, create a repo, GitHub will actually tell me how would I connect a local repo with that of a remote repo. So I have done git init locally. I've done adding, I've done commit, 
Uh, if needed, I would need to change my branch to main. That's a really good practice. We try to stay away from calling something master. That's not a very inclusive word. So instead, we might need to rename our branch main. To my recollection, it's already called main. What we do need to do is to connect it remotely like so. So git remote add origin. This will create that connection uh, between your local repo and that of this repo on GitHub. Let's do that next. So we do git remote add origin. Let's also see that we don't need to rename our branch. It's already called main. That's great. And next step we needed to do was to push what we have to that remote repo. So we do git push minus u origin main. So at this point, we have pushed our files, our index.html, to that remote repo, and we can verify that that is the case by going back to the repo on GitHub. You reload this page, and now you can see that it consists of index.html. Now, these were some basics when you start off with uh, Git. Uh, you create some files locally, you run git init, you add uh, git add when you want things to be part of your staging, uh, you commit things to create that save point in time, and I've also shown you how you could be connecting your local Git repo with that of GitHub. So now, suddenly, you can have a lot of collaborators from across the world to work with you. And yeah, you can just keep on working with this. Just remember, do changes, do git add, git commit, and yeah, I will also show you how could you do a push. Now, right now, we did a git push minus u origin main. That's not needed as we move on. So we can do it like this. We do git add and we're gonna do this catch all because we only have one file. Git commit minus m, do a change. And then this time we do a shorter version of git push, which is just git push instead of all the business with git push minus u already in main. These changes are being synchronized with our remote repo and pushed in that direction. And now if we reload this, we can see that our code has been updated. 